for this uh, lunch meetup so and i am from india and uh, let me share my screen and give some overview about me as well as uh, we will see what is azure data factory and how it is going to help you all in creating the pipeline and move your data and play around your data okay so let me share my screen please let me know once you can able to see my screen yeah we can see it so my name is harun rashid and i'm working as a senior consultant with hitachi solution in the azure cloud enablement team as a data engineer and today uh, we are going to see about this uh, build your first pipeline using the azure data factory so uh, yeah we'll see how to build the pipeline but before that we need to know uh, what are the components involved in it and we need to understand the components then we can able to build the pipeline easily right so we will see that uh, theoretical part uh, in first 10 minutes then we will jump into the azure uh, portal and start creating our pipeline okay and these are some of my achievements like uh, i am my mct as well as uh, certified data engineer from azure as well as uh, certified uh, data engineer associate from databricks so these are some of my achievements and uh, we are uh, going to data factory now so today what we are going to see is these are the basic concepts we are going to cover the introduction to azure data factory as well as what are the components involved in it okay once we understand the components involved in it then we can able to easily build the pipeline so before jumping into data factory i just want to understand uh, the audience like uh, whether you are aware of azure services previously or you are new to azure or how it is so that it will be helpful me to start from whether azure or start directly from data factory you can unmute yourself and uh, can give me another assist of support okay okay i got one response new to azure okay will give few seconds people are sending messages in chat but no azure okay so i can see most of you are already having some experience with azure so if you are new to azure just i will give you a one line explanation azure is a cloud provider okay uh, as simple like uh, gcp or aws azure is also one of the cloud provider who are going to provide the service to us it may be uh, infrastructure or uh, your platform or your so software as a service okay so yeah thanks for your responses so azure is a cloud provider and uh, with the help of that uh, cloud service we are going to build our data factory pipeline that is azure data factory pipeline today so i am going to uh, show you something similar to the core adf concept but not too much hands on experience okay okay fine if you are new to azure then this is the hierarchy okay so the resources whatever you are seeing here let me highlight it so these are all the services that we are going to get from azure okay i, I think you can able to see what i am highlighting here these are all the services that you are going to get from azure okay so to create a resource you need to have a resource group resource group is nothing but a kind of a logical container we can say okay which is going to hold your resources and uh, the resource group is tied to the subscription and uh, subscriptions is tied to management groups that means your organization can have one or more subscriptions and uh, each subscription can have one or more resource groups and uh, each resource groups can have one or more resources this is the hierarchy and uh, azure data factory whatever we are going to Uh, see now is belongs to resources we can call them at as a uh, azure resource or azure service okay so this is the basic explanation of uh, what is resource resource group uh, like that and uh, we are going to concentrate on this one that is what is azure data factory so azure data factory is nothing but uh, it is a cloud based uh, integration service or we can say cloud based uh, etl tool which allows us to create a pipeline to move our data from uh, one place to another place as simple as that okay so i i hope uh, you all know what is etl etl means nothing but uh, extract transform and load that means uh, if you are having some data you need to extract it you need to transform the data because all the raw data is going to all the source data is going to be in a raw format right 
So you need to do some transformation over the data and you need to load that data into some destination so that the end user can consume the data from that destination. So that is what the ETL is. And uh, ADF, uh, with the help of this ADF, we can perform that uh, ETL or ELT operation, okay? So this is the basic architecture of uh, Azure Data Factory. Okay, here you can see we have the source, so source from block storage, and our destination is going to be the SQL Server. Okay, and in between that, we are having some activities which is going to help us to move the data from the source to destination. Our ultimate aim is to move the data from one place to another place with the help of this data factory. For that, we need to build a pipeline. Pipeline is nothing but combination of one or more activities. Okay, so activities is nothing but this copy data is one activity. Okay, and uh, we have uh, n number of activities in data factory that I will show you when we move to Azure portal. So this is the basic architecture. Okay, and these are all the components uh, uh, of uh, Azure data factory. So the main components are these. Okay, so pipeline activities, data set, link service, integration runtime, triggers and data flows. So we need to understand each and every component, okay, and uh, how we can create that, uh, how to configure it. Then we can easily able to create our pipeline, okay. We are going to see each and everything individually, and at last, after understanding each and every component, we are going to build our first pipeline. So yeah, as I earlier said, uh, this ADF is a code-free ETL as a service. Okay, here you can ingest your data, you can uh, create your control flows, you can create your data flows, and you can schedule the flows. That means you can create a pipeline and you can schedule it. That means on daily basis, if you want to run every day 9 a.m., you can schedule it on 9 a.m. Or every one hour, if you want to schedule it, you can schedule that pipeline. And you can monitor the same. If it fails or uh, if it is running for a long time, you can go to the monitor tab and you can check what is happening. Okay, all those things are uh, available in our Azure Data Factory. So this is how the flow works. That means uh, first you need to connect to the sources and data set and collect the data and then transform the data, then publish, publish in the sense you are going to save that pipeline and publish it, that means trigger it. Then you are going to monitor the same. This is the steps involved, simple four steps involved, okay? Any doubt still here? These are all the basic things, the basic uh, explanation and uh, definition of Azure Data Factory. Any queries still here? So as I said, uh, uh, we are going to create a pipeline. To create a pipeline, as I said, the pipeline is a combination of uh, one or more activities. We need to have an activity, okay? To create a pipeline, we need to have an activity. To create an activity, we need to have a data set, okay? So this is the hierarchy for the pipeline. To create a pipeline, activity is needed. For activity, data set is needed, okay? And one more important concept is uh, integration runtime. And uh, we have these three integration runtimes, okay? One is uh, Azure integration runtime, which comes with uh, every data factory. It is by default, it will come. And we have a self-hosted integration runtime as well as Azure SSIS integration runtime. So uh, let me share a whiteboard and uh, I will uh, tell you the hierarchy here. Let me share a whiteboard. Please give me a second, it is loading. Okay, so now we need to understand we are going to build a pipeline. So this is going to be our pipeline. And uh, we know that uh, pipeline means one or more activities. So we can say one activity and uh, we can say the second activity. So, and we know that for activity, we need to have a data set. Okay, we can say this is, a, this is having one data set and this is having one more data set. But we need to have a integration runtime. That means uh, we need to have some computing uh, unit to run this data factory. 
So that is called as integration runtime. So we will call that as IR integration runtime. There are three types of integration runtimes, right? Uh, we are going to see what the three types of integration runtime and when to use which integration runtime. That is very important. Okay. So that one I'm going to explain it now. So you can able to see my uh, presentation, right? Uh, so here we have this on-premises and cloud. Okay. For example, if your source and destination both are in cloud, then you can go with Azure integration runtime. Okay. But uh, if your uh, source or destination, any one data set is present in on-premises, then you need to go with a self-hosted integration runtime. Okay. That means uh, if your data set is present in on-premises, then you need to have your integration runtime that is self-hosted integration runtime installed in that on-premises server. Okay. So that uh, we can uh, able to access the data from that on-premises server. Here you can see if your source and destination belongs to cloud, you will use Azure integration runtime. And if you have any existing SSIS packages, so SSIS packages, nothing but uh, SQL Server integration services, prior to this uh, cloud-based uh, ETL tool, they have this on-premises uh, ETL tool that is called as SSIS. So in your organization, if you're having any previous SSIS package and you want to migrate that to this uh, ADF and uh, run as it is, then you can simply use this Azure SSIS integration runtime and uh, call that SSIS package inside this Azure Data Factory. So in that case, you need to use this Azure SSIS integration runtime, okay? So here also you are using self-hosted, but this is in cloud. The source and destination both are in cloud, but why you are using integration runtime that is self-hosted? Because you are having a separate virtual network. Inside that virtual network, you are having a data. In that case also, you need to use a self-hosted integration runtime, okay? So here SSIS package is there inside the virtual network. So you are going with Azure SSIS integration runtime. So now you all are clear with when to use which integration runtime, right? Any doubts? Yes, uh, Benjamin. Benjamin, you raised your hand. You have any query? Okay, sorry, I was reading up that. Okay, fine. Yeah. So we have three integration runtimes, and now you know which integration runtime to use at uh, which case. Okay. So now, after creating the integration frame, integration runtime is the first phase. Okay. In the first place, you need to create the integration runtime. After that, we need to create linked service. After that, we need to create data set. Then we need to create activity. Then that is our pipeline. Okay. So let me go to the whiteboard again. So now you created an integration runtime. Once you created an integration runtime, that means that you got the computing unit. Then now you are going to create a linked service. Linked service in the sense, what is the advantage in using as a data factory? Will you mention the limitation constraint between different types of? Okay, so there is uh, no limitations or constraints. Like uh, it is totally depends on uh, your use case, uh, David. Like uh, if your uh, data set is present in on premises. Okay, any one of your data set is present in on-premises, then definitely you need to go with the self-hosted integration runtime. Or your data sets, both the data sets, uh, that means source and the destination data set, both present in cloud, you need to go with uh, the Azure uh, integration runtime. Or uh, you have any SSIS package that you need to run in ADF, then you need to go with Azure SSIS integration runtime. I will show you that uh, in the Azure portal so that you will get some uh, more idea, okay? So it totally depends on our own requirement. So once after creating the integration runtime, it comes the linked service. So linked service, now consider integration runtime as a gateway. That means you have the source and uh, destination. You open the gateway between the source and destination. That means the ADF and the source destination, okay? So now you want to connect to that uh, source data set or the destination data set. For that, you need to create a linked service. So after creating a linked service, uh, your data factory can go and uh, read the data from that uh, source data set or destination data set. That means uh, uh, consider your laptop uh, is having a data and uh, you want to run a pipeline to fetch the data from your local disk uh, D drive, okay? So now I need to install the self-hosted integration runtime in your laptop because it is an on-premises uh, system now. After installing the self-hosted IR in your laptop, I need to create a linked service that linked service will connect to your local disk D drive. 
okay that is linked service after linked service i need to create a data set so this data set is like inside the local disk drive d you will be having a folder called uh, uh, some sales okay so that sales folder is having a data so this data set will connect to that sales folder now okay that sales folder inside the d drive so that is the hierarchy you need to create the integration runtime create the linked service then create the data set after creating the data set you can start building your activities and create the pipeline so this is the overall hierarchy of uh, how you can uh, create your pipeline so now just i have explained you theoretically now we will go to the azure portal where we can see everything uh, in practical before jumping into the portal any doubts in this uh, theoretical concept we have a we have a question on the chat here. Uh, if you could mention uh, some limitation and constraints between the different types of integration runtimes. Yeah, I, I, actually, I I explained that uh, to David. Like, uh, there is no limitations or constraint between the integration runtime. It is like uh, based on our requirement, we need to choose which integration runtime we want. Like, uh, if it is an on-premises. Then we need to go with the self-hosted integration runtime. If both the data sets are in cloud, we can go with the Azure uh, integration runtime. And if you want to run any of your SSIS package, you want you need to go with Azure SSIS integration runtime. So those yeah. three are the integration runtime. If I just may add, what I was referring to is that uh, I know that uh, all at least the self-hosted and Azure support data movement, but the data flow is only on the Azure uh, hosted, not the, on the self-hosted one. So yeah, like you said, it's on the scenarios, but also in what you can actually model or what kind of activities you can put into your pipeline, depending uh, depends also on what kind of runtime you, you're going to attach to it, right? Yeah. 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 Thanks for that, David. So now we are going to the Azure portal. Let me share my screen. So if you're new, new to Azure, this is the Azure portal. That is portal.azure.com. So from here, you can uh, get all the Azure services. So for that, you need to have a subscription. So I'm having my own subscription. If you are uh, into your organization, your organization will have the subscription. If you go to subscriptions, you can able to see what are the subscription that you're having access. I'm having access to this subscription. So I can create my resources under the subscription. That means all the billing will come under the subscription. Okay, so Azure is uh, like a pay as you go service. So whatever the resource that you're going to use, you're going to pay for it. Okay, so let me go to the Azure homepage. So here you're having a n number of services or resources, whatever you can say. Depends on your requirement, you can choose from the categories available here. And if you want to implement any security, you can go under the security and uh, create your resources here. And now we are uh, going to create a Azure Data Factory resource. So it will be available under the analytics category. So here we have the data factory. I'm going to create a data factory resource now. So it will ask the basic details like of which subscription you want. I'm choosing my subscription. So as I said earlier, uh, resource group is nothing but a kind of a logical container where all the resources will uh, go and sit inside it. So you can choose from the existing resource group or you can create the new resource group on the go, I'm going to create a new resource group called uh, Azure Norway. And uh, this is like the project detail. That means uh, the subscription and the resource group information. Now we need to provide the information for our data factory. Now I need to give the name for my data factory. I'm going to say this as Azure. This should be a unique name. So I'm just giving today's date. Okay. And a region, whichever region uh, uh, is close to you, you need to choose that region. And version, we have only V2. Then just clicking next. And this Git configuration, if you want to implement uh, the uh, Git CA CD, uh, uh, that means you can uh, configure it now. That means if you disable this, it will ask for the Azure DevOps account and the repos, everything. But later on also you can do that. After creating the basic pipelines, uh, implementing and testing, you can configure. So I'm just saying configure Git later. That means after creating my pipeline, I can configure it from the Azure Data Factory Studio itself. Okay. 
So networking, that means whether I want to have a separate endpoint to connect to this uh, data factory or public endpoint is fine. Those kind of uh, networking things you can take care of here. I'm not going to change anything here. So this is like uh, the data encryption. I'm just leaving the default uh, Microsoft manager keys encryption. If you want to have your own customer manager key encryption, you can go with that. So tags are simple. Uh, it will be available for all the resources in Azure. It is just uh, to make us understand to which category this resource belongs. For example, I can say this is belongs to this is a ADF and uh, it belongs to dev environment. OK, I can say it dev. That means uh, later on I can go to the tags and search for uh, dev. It will list out all the dev related resources. OK, or if it uh, belongs to any finance team, you can simply say finance. So later on, you can go to the tags in Azure portal and search for finance. You will get to know what are all the resources that belongs to finance. Okay. So just I'm saying that uh, demo. Okay. Then reviewing and uh, validating. If you have any uh, errors, it will throw a, like uh, if, if the name is already taken, like that means it will throw an error. Now the validation passed. I'm just creating the data factory now. Might take a few seconds. Meanwhile, I will just uh, show you the Azure storage account. That means, uh, so we have to save our data somewhere, right? Uh, so Azure provides that uh, facility using that uh, using the storage account. Okay, that means uh, we can uh, create our uh, containers. We can uh, uh, create some hierarchy of our data and store uh, store our data over there. Okay, so now we are going to have a storage account. I already created a storage account. For example, uh, I'm going with uh, the storage account that I created. I hope uh, you all are aware of storage account and uh, what it is going to do. It is simply help us to store the data. Okay, I created a blob storage, and in this blob storage, I'm going to have. Uh, let me create a new container. I'm just naming this as a demo container. So now consider uh, you have a client and uh, the client requirement is to move some data from this uh, demo container to some output container. Okay, uh, let me create one more container as well. You have a demo container and I'm going to have one more container called uh, output demo. Okay, it should not have any special character. And I'm going to upload some uh, sample data inside this demo container, but in real time uh, through some uh, uh, third party uh, APIs or through some data flows, uh, this demo container will always get the data consider like that. But now I'm manually uploading the data here just to show you all. Let me just upload any sample data. So your client requirement is like uh, they are saying I have a file in my demo container and I want to move this uh, file from demo container to output container. Okay, but this this might look like a simple, uh, but uh, consider in a, a production uh, scale, you will be having n number of files, you will be having n number of containers. So based on the uh, logic, you need to move the data from this container to the different container. But today we are going to see the simple. Uh, exercise of creating the data movement pipeline. Okay, for that I created a one container which contains the data. Okay, so now we have two containers with uh, one data in data file in demo container. Now going back to the data factory, the deployment is completed now. So once the once the resource got created, it will uh, look like this only. It will ask us to launch the studio. So it will launch the data factory studio for us. So inside this studio only we are going to create all our pipelines that link to the service or integration runtime, whatever we discussed, right? We are going to uh, create, manage everything inside this studio only. Okay, so this is uh, Data Factory Studio. And uh, here, this is the home page. 
and uh, in this author tab only we can able to create all our pipelines data set everything and this is the monitor tab where we can go and monitor our uh, pipelines which are all running and under this manage tab we can create our link service integration runtime and we can configure the git now previously we gave uh, the configure git later right now you can go here and uh, configure it all those things triggers you can create here and this is learning center if you want to learn more about this data factory microsoft is having a very good tutorials here you can go here and learn uh, some advanced concepts of the new features from uh, adf directly from microsoft okay so now i am going to show you this uh, author tab so here only we are going to create the pipelines if you expand this pipeline okay i'm going to create a new pipeline and i'm just going to say this is demo pl okay and you can see this white space here only we can build our pipeline and these are all activities we discussed right a combination of one or more activities is called as pipeline so these are all activities you have n number of activities here depends on our requirement we can combine all these things okay for example uh, the commonly used one is this uh, copyright activity okay this is for data movement and you have this data flow activity data flow is for uh, doing some data transformation okay uh, we will come to that uh, data flow later and if you have any synapse pipeline and synapse notebooks uh, and you want to call that notebook synapse notebook you can use this and uh, if you have any databricks notebook creator and you want to call that databricks notebook uh, you can use this uh, databricks notebook and you can run python codes and you can run your u sql and these are all this general tab so for uh, every adf developer you need to aware of this all the components under this general tab because it is going to allow us to create the data flow okay the effective data flow that means uh, append variable means uh, you can have n number of variables in data factory this append variable will append a new variable to it okay you can delete any variable values you can call one pipeline from another pipeline okay so all these things we can do simply i will uh, first show you what is how to create that integration runtime link to service data set everything later on uh, if we have time we will uh, explore this okay so now uh, my ultimate aim is to copy the data from since using spark activity yes uh, spark activity uh, i have some experience uh, maybe we can uh, discuss that uh, later uh, since i worked on databricks uh, I, i know some of i so i know some of the spark activities used okay so first we need to uh, see okay in this copy data activity if you see here this general tab you can uh, simply fill the uh, name and description this time out is like uh, you can uh, uh, set the time uh, for how much time it can run okay for example if i am going to say 10 seconds after 10 seconds if it is going to keep on running it will fail typically we will not keep 10 seconds for a time out for example 1 hour or 2 hour i will keep okay more than 1 hour my activity is running means it will fail okay then uh, retry we have so due to some uh, uh, connectivity issue or data issue if my activity is failing i can retry my activity for example if i say 3 okay if i say 3 my copy data activity if it fails due to any connection issue or data issue it will retry for 3 times in the interval of 30 seconds it is basically for uh, uh, debugging it on its own In, in case if it fails due to some connectivity issue you no need to manually go and uh, retrigger it the particular activity it will automatically retrigger it three times in the 30 30 seconds of interval for example in the first retry itself it is passing means it will go to the next activities in the first retry also if it fails in the second retry also if it fails then in the third retry also if it fails means at the end it will fail because we have given only three retries here okay so based on the requirement you can give 3 or 4 or whatever it is and the interval also you can change then coming to source it will ask us to select the source data set okay to create a data set to create a data set we need to have the linked service we need to have the integration runtime the hierarchy that i showed is like in this way like to create a data set we need to have integration runtime linked service and a data set you can go either go in this hierarchy or you can go in this hierarchy anything is fine but the ideal way is to first create your integration runtime create the linked service then create your data set because then only you will have the hold on all these things you will have the understanding of what kind of data you are going to do the transformation okay 
So I'm not going to create the data set first. I'm going to create the integration runtime first. I'm going to the manage tab and uh, you can see the integration runtime here. I said, right, uh, by default, uh, Azure integration runtime will come with the data factory. You can see this uh, Azure auto result integration runtime. The type is Azure. It will be, I didn't create any integration runtime. I just created the data factory. By default, this will come and it will be in the running state. Okay. So since now I am, my data, that means my source data is present in storage account, Azure storage account, and my destination is also the Azure storage account. That means both are in cloud. So now I can uh, use this integration runtime itself, right? Any, any doubt in that? Why I can use this integration runtime for my uh, case now? Because both are in cloud. But consider my source is now present in this demo container. But I want to move this uh, data, that is this file, to any of the, consider I want to move it to on-premise SQL Server, or I want to move it to your uh, machine, on-premises uh, machine. Then uh, which integration runtime I need to use? Can anyone tell? Self-hosted. Self-hosted, yes. Because uh, any one data set is present in on-premises means we need to go with the self-hosted. How to create it? Simply click on new. It will ask whether you want uh, the self-hosted or Azure SSIS. Okay, this Airflow, the uh, it is coming as a new feature. It is in preview mode, so you can choose a self-hosted or Azure SSIS. Uh, if you choose self-hosted, means it will it will create and it will give you a link. Actually, okay, it will uh, give you the link and keys. You need to download this IR application and install in your uh, on-premises machine. And uh, once you once the installation completed, it will open. It, the application will open. Inside that, you need to paste either this or this key. Then only that uh, integration runtime will be up and running. Okay. So that is how you will create your uh, Azure self-hosted integration runtime. If you properly install that and uh, give the key, this will be running. So that now you have the you open the gateway between this data factory and your on-premises machine so that you can now connect to that on-premises machine and get the data or push the data so that is self-hosted and similarly if you have a ssis then you need to give all the ssis information here okay uh, ssis package information here and you need to create the integration runtime for ssis as well but now this is enough fair enough for us so i'm not going to create anything new now, after creating integration runtime, now what we need to do, we need to create a linked service, right? So now I'm going to create a linked service. There is no linked service yet. I'm going to create a new linked service. It will ask what kind of data set you want to connect, okay? Now ours is a Azure uh, data lake storage account, right? I'm just going and, uh, and you have uh, n number of uh, more than uh, 200 connectors you are having here, okay? So I'm going inside Azure, minus Azure block storage, Okay, so I'm choosing Azure Blob Storage. Continue. And it will ask for name. It is always good to have naming conventions preferred by Microsoft, that is LS and uh, give your name. Okay, LS in the sense linked service. If it is integration runtime, give IR. Data set means give DS. Pipeline means give PL. Okay, it is good to have that naming convention. So I'm going to say LS underscore demo. Okay, storage. Description, no need to give. If you want, you can give. It's not mandatory. And uh, connection via, these are all fine. How you want to connect, whether you want to connect using Azure key or service principle, you can choose that. And uh, if you want to enter the endpoint manually, you can uh, enter the manual endpoint of that storage account, or simply you can uh, choose it from the subscription. So now my data is in the container, right? I'm going to choose which subscription and the storage account, it is blob test 07. Yeah, so now I created the linked service. So you can relate, right? Now what is linked service? Linked service, I'm going to connect till that storage account. But I'm, I'm not going to connect to that particular file now. I'm just connecting to the storage account level, okay? I can just test the connection. Connection successful. So I created the linked service. So what is the next, next hierarchy after linked service? Can anyone tell? 
text to linked service, we need to create a data set. How we can protect data between storage account and data factory? Uh, how we can protect data between storage account and data factory? Is it any service endpoints can be written or private link can be created? So the data security, let me show you here. So since uh, uh, you actually you can have your uh, key vault service here, okay? So you can create the uh, keys for your storage account and uh, you can uh, use that uh, key and uh, connect to that storage account. That in that uh, way, you can uh, protect your data, okay? Since this is a demo, I directly went to connecting to that uh, storage account. It will have its own storage key, but if you want to implement the key vault uh, facility, you can do that, okay? So I created the linked service. So next one is data set, okay? So data set, I am going to the pipeline. So in that pipeline, we have data sets here. I'm going to create a new data set. So uh, we need to choose which one it is. It is Azure Block Storage again. And uh, in, this, in this block storage, we are going to have a, a, what a DBC file it is. So I'm going with a binary file. DS source I'm mentioning. Now it will ask for the linker service. Okay, so why I went in the hierarchy from integration runtime to linked service to data set is, if you haven't created the linked service, it will ask you to create now. But uh, see, now you can create a linked service from here, but I already created a linked service and came to this uh, data set. So I can choose from the list. I am choosing the linked service. Now I need to mention from which path I need to get the file. Okay, so this is directly you are connecting to the data set itself. That means the file itself. Now you can go and you can say in the demo container, you are having that file. Okay. That means inside demo container, whatever the file you have, you are going to get that as a source data. Okay. But if you have any preference, like uh, you want to move only CSV files from that uh, source data set, you can simply say star.csv, the extension you can give here. But uh, you want to move all the files from that source, that uh, folder uh, container, you can simply leave as it is. Okay. So now I created the source data set. I'm going to create the destination data set as well. My destination is also now data factory, okay? So I'm going with Azure block storage and the binary. I'm going to say DS destination. Same linked service because this linked service is also connecting to the same uh, block storage only. So I'm selecting the same linked service. But if you are going to move the data from uh, Azure block storage to Azure SQL DB, then definitely you need to create another linked service. That linked service should be pointing to a SQL DB. Okay. So for each and every different service, you need to create a different linked service. But now in our case, it is same. So I'm choosing the same linked service. You need to mention which to which destination you want to put it. Now I want to put inside the output demo container. So I'm choosing the output demo container. So now I have created two data sets that is source data set and destination data set. I'm going to the pipeline now. So this is my pipeline. Now here, no need to create it from data set hierarchy. I already created everything. So now I'm going to choose the source data set and I'm going to choose the sync data set. That means destination data set, whatever I created. Okay. So now I can simply run this pipeline. So that means I have only one activity now. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to debug this. You can uh, simply, this is like debugging. That means uh, uh, during the development phase, you are debugging and seeing, okay? But in real time, you will publish this pipeline and you will create a trigger and uh, uh, you will make the pipeline to run on daily basis or hourly basis that I, we will see now. Okay, it got succeeded. That means the data movement got completed. We will see that. So the data present in source, that is demo container. I'm going to the output demo. And you can see the same file here. So simply we moved file from one place to another place. Like this, you can configure the pipeline. You can create, you can parameterize your pipeline. 
and uh, you can uh, play with that uh, configurations everything okay but for everything you need to know the basic like uh, what are all the components how to configure the components now you all know what are all the important components in the adf and how to configure it and how to create the uh, simple uh, basic pipeline okay so now along with this what you can do you can have your uh, for example you can loop each and every file from that uh, you have the iteration and conditionals okay so if you are having n number of files in a uh, in a container and you want to loop through that files and you want to move only the csv files to a dis different destination and you want to move all the text files to a different destination you can play around with this uh, looping concept and parameterization concept everything uh, but uh, since we are uh, we are on time uh, we cannot uh, show that uh, because our aim is to uh, show you the basic pipeline creation yeah uh, i have few questions in chat let's just see about private links and groups and such yeah thanks david uh, for that uh, answer and uh, say you want to add more compute power to speed up your pipelines is that possible to do from the data factory ui or do you have to yeah you can uh, do that uh, for example in this copyright activity in the settings right uh, you can there is something called uh, diu data integration unit uh based on your uh, requirement you can uh, choose that for example auto means based on the data movement uh, it will automatically take how many dius it it want for example if you use uh, dau it will cost you 0.25 dollars per dau okay if you want to increase manually increase it you can say 32 dau means uh, so 32 dius will be running all the time but that is not uh, uh, the uh, wise solution you can give auto based on your data it will automatically take it okay but uh, if your requirement is like you want all the time uh, 16 da use you can uh, give that and other can one connect to sftp service and copy file yes you can do that you can connect to sftp and copy and yeah thanks uh, david again for sharing that link uh, you can if, if you have any apis and if you want to copy the data from api to your destination you can easily uh, connect that uh, for that what you need to do Uh, instead of uh, choosing the source data set and the uh, linked service as uh, what uh, what we did now you need to do it in a different way simply i will show you for example you want to get it from any apis okay third uh, any website you want to get the data you can get it from http so in this http you need to for example csv file from any website for that you need to create a linked service for the http let me quickly create a link okay you want to provide the api links and you want to provide the authentication type everything so that from that uh, website you can able to get the file and move it to your destination so that is how it works uh, it totally depends you can explore the connectors whatever it has okay as you data factory is having more than 200 connectors so you can go and check uh, based on your requirement so this is how you can create your uh, first pipeline from scratch i hope uh, if you are new to data factory you might have learned something but if you are already expert in data factory and used this might be like uh, uh, a refresh session for you I, i hope like that any queries thanks thanks benjamin thank you karen um and also feel free to open the mic if you uh, want to to uh, say the question out loud instead of uh, typing like a maniac in uh, in the chat yeah if you all are good then i'm done from my side and uh, i'm open for questions and if you have any thing any questions related to data factory or data bricks or any data engineering activities you can uh, reach out to me in linkedin uh, i am writing some blogs related to data engineering and uh, all the azure uh, cloud uh, components So you can follow me on LinkedIn, and this is my Medium uh, blog page, and uh, this is my C Sharp uh, blog page. You can follow me there as well. Thanks, Kato. Thanks. thanks yeah, thanks, Kato. Thanks, Danny. Maybe a quick, uh, quick question, uh, Harun. Um, yes, sir. In from your experience, uh, would you say that the Uh, Azure Synapse uh, pipelines are as mature as Azure Data Factory ones, or uh, is there still like a feature disparity? And 
you would prefer to use ADF in, in more complex scenarios? So ADF in more complex scenarios, because what are the new features, right? They will first release it to ADF only. Then only they will uh, push that to Synapse pipelines. So it is always uh, good to have a data factory, but uh, if you want to configure everything, like you have a, a data, you have some uh, big data to process and you have some Azure functions, everything all together, then you can go with uh, Azure Synapse Studio because it supports everything. Azure Synapse Studio is a kind of combination of uh, pipeline creation, notebook creation, SQL, everything you can handle there. But Data Factory is simple pipeline. Thanks. And some people might have a question like, uh, why we need to go for Databricks? We have this ETL in this Data Factory itself, right? Then why we need to have, go for Databricks as part? So if you want to do any complex transformation, definitely you need to go with uh, this data bricks because here you cannot do any complex transformation. Here you can do transformation. I will just quickly show, I know we are uh, exceeding the time. I will quickly show, we have data flows here. I can create a data flow. This data flow is for transforming the data. Let me add this uh, source itself. Okay, you can see only these kind of transformations we can do. Okay, these are all like, uh, uh the system transformation we can say the, uh, you cannot have any user different transformations that means that uh, your requirement is like uh, much complex and you cannot able to achieve from it means you definitely need to go with the data bricks or spark okay so these are uh, that is the limitation in data factory when it comes to data transformation yeah that is data flows uh, i thought of covering it yeah this that is data flow for us in data factory with that, yeah, I'm good. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, ask now. Really good. Sigur, uh, your hand raised. I was going to applaud, so thank you for the presentation. Very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Good. Unless there are any other questions, uh, thank you to every who, one who, who joined, and a special thank you to Arun who, who gave us a good introduction and a walkthrough of uh, the data factory and the capabilities there. So yeah, please join the Azure user group on uh, Meetup and uh, stay tuned for uh, more sessions. And uh, Hope to see you all again in the future quite soon. Yeah, thanks, Anders. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great day. Here. We'll see you all soon.